Let's go out to play, Daddy. When Bioshock was the perfect blend of storytelling and like combat and gameplay, Bioshock 2 feels like slightly lighter a story, but much more like combat sandbox. It does feel kind of like Bioshock 1 remade. Chris Nolan did the remake of Insomnia. It was like, that was the world's most unnecessary but well done remake. Like, it actually was a really good movie for what it was, but you totally did not need that to exist at all. And that's kind of my feeling overall, with, as, especially when I started Bioshock 2, is like, this is a pretty good game, but it was not. Bioshock didn't need a sequel, but no. 2K wants a sequel because it sold a shit ton of Bioshock. It's one of those things where it was yeah. so successful. Of course, you're going to play it a little safe. I think they played it really safe. I mean, the 10 years later thing is kind of interesting, but I thought I was hoping they would go off and do something totally. I don't know. I mean, we had objectivists underwater. Can we have, like, collectivists on the moon? <laughs> It feels more like the first game where you put on the Big Daddy suit, but I felt like a splicer would come up, put three bullets in me, and I, I'm yeah, suddenly uh, dead, and, dead. Well, we're a prototype, that's why we suck so much. You feel really weak and underpowered in the beginning, but later on when you're past like maybe the level or two after where you stop that, mm -hmm. that's when you start building up everything more, you actually start feeling like, okay, I'm I'm like a badass Big Daddy, like I could kill a splicer like one or two hits. <laughs> It actually makes me feel like yeah, a big bad because I, I have okay just like one weapon, but the upgraded security thing to make two floating robots accompany me and hypnotize another big guy to fight with me and still have enough juice to shoot lightning and fire at people. And that actually made the game a lot more fun. Now, again, but that's so like it's, something so you it's, get. It's a game that starts off hard and gets easier. It kind of does for me. I mean, I don't know how you feel overall, but for example, like a big sister, she like would always take me out. <laughs> As I got on, I got my power, so actually, I have a Sega where I can kill like a big sister like two minutes now. They're the new, like, this is the really big thing you gotta fight that's really hard to do for the first game. Now that big guys are kind of your normal enemy. Like, like you so. said, they feel way overpowered in the beginning. You have that first, you have a first fight that just feels impossible, whether it is or not. And you get stronger as you go along, but it's so. I don't know, it's disheartening to go along and just feel completely powerless against these things. So the I, difficulty yeah. curve is just backwards. Kind of, yeah. I actually yeah. like, initially, the presentation of the aesthetics of like how every time one comes up, the screen starts shaking and starts screaming. It's a good intimidating moment. But then when you know like how that works, the system works, then you start doing it like regularly once every level, it kind of becomes a little bit repetitive, like, okay, this is like my, you know, it's going to scream like three times before it actually up, jumps up at me. Yeah, then it, it just becomes methodical, a like a lot of the rest of the game. It, you go along and it becomes yeah. just a rote, do this, do this, do this. There are times where even like the best levels, I think, they get really monotonous because they'll give you like a task that's almost clearly designed to take up time. Like, go gather X number of this specific thing that's scattered around the level. And I'm like, okay, the, the first Battle Shark was kind of fetch questy, but this one, it feels really... Question. The regular game is also just go through into this room, clear out everybody, and yeah. that felt felt tiresome. I was incredibly impressed with the multiplayer. Yeah. When you first start up, you have a prologue, or you can just jump right into multiplayer. And the prologue actually sets up a, a story to the first Bioshock game. Like, it all takes place before any of that happens. And you have audio diaries and logs, and I thought that was all really in cool. In the multiplayer? Yes. Wow. Jeez. Like, I as think... you level up in the multiplayer, as you kill more people, you're, you get more plasma powers, you get more weapons to use, but you also get more audio diaries that explain things that are happening before Bioshock 1. And you're like, Wow, I, I would have paid for this by itself. It's a good game. It is still, it has the basic mechanics down. It's, it's fun to play, but 
It doesn't live up to Bioshock 1. Ultimately, it's like worth more investing, but it is a rough beginning. If Bioshock 1 had been this game, I would not have enjoyed Bioshock 1 as much either. That's the test, yeah. But yeah. you guys should definitely check out the multiplayer, because it is really, really cool.